Welcome to Right on Track, a songwriting podcast. Thanks to Tone for tuning in. I'm Demi Michelle Schwartz, and I'm thrilled you're joining me on my songwriting journey. So kick back and relax, don't fall flat, and remember, stay right on track. Hey everyone, welcome back to Right on Track. Joining me today is a very special guest. Please welcome Savannah Jane. Hey, Savannah. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks. Of course. I'm thrilled you're joining me today because we're going to be chatting about creating our own opportunities and embracing opportunities and lots of other things. And I can't wait to get into all of that. But before we do so, can you share with everyone a little about yourself and your musical journey so far? Uh, yes, my name is Savannah Jane. Um, I'm a vocalist, songwriter, and guitarist. Um, I'm currently based in New York City, but I've lived kind of all over the world. Um, just moved back here from England. And yeah, I'm just putting out a new album in a few months. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about me. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, let's dive right into our chat. And you have a great quote to kick us off. So will you read that? Oh, yes. Um, If opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. And that's by Milton Berle. This is incredible. So why did you select this one? Um, I like this quote because I think that it kind of like encompasses how you can become a successful performer or pretty much successful in any industry um, instead of like waiting around for an opportunity to come around or for someone to offer you something. You can kind of like create your own uh, opportunities all the time. I love that. And I think the way this quote is worded too, it's awesome. And there's like metaphorical language because oftentimes we say like, you know, opportunity will knock and you have to answer, but not all the time opportunity knocks. You have to create your own opportunities. And I love the idea of building a door because what I'm kind of taking away from that part of it is that it takes work, right? Like opportunities don't just fall into our laps and even when they don't come to us and we need to create our own, we have to put in the work. And I think that that comes out in this quote as well. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the work sometimes is like, seems like invisible. So it probably looks from the outside to other people that you're like, oh, a person is just getting a lot of opportunities, but there's probably a lot of stuff going on underneath that, you know, you don't always see. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's just perfect for the music industry in general. You see, certain artists kind of skyrocket or independent artists too going out there and doing so many things and from the outside looking in people can think wow they're really getting lucky and you know like all these opportunities are just coming to them left and right but as you know like there's so much that goes on behind the scenes trying to promote yourself networking so a lot of it is invisible I completely agree Mm -hmm. there's no such thing as an overnight success (laughs) Absolutely not. Like even the people who do tend to have that, they've been working at their craft for years. They've been working at their singing or songwriting or whatever. Like there is a level of talent that's needed. Sure, there's the idea that you can get lucky and being in the right place at the right time. But at the same time, I think that the right place at the right time won't come unless you've put in some kind of work and you have some kind of talent to show for yourself. So you've done so many cool things. I <laughs> like really want to. Yeah, of course. I really want to hear all about. So you have been a uh, contracted vocalist in some really cool places. Uh, one being cruises. Can you talk about this? Yes, um, I've been a contract vocalist for almost ten years now, coming up on, which feels very crazy. Um, but yeah, I started working for Carnival Cruise Lines in my early twenties. And it was just such a, such a kind of like, um, fluke that it even happened. I I mean, I got called in for an audition, so I suppose, you know, they saw something in me, which was good, but you know, I had to take like a 17 hour bus ride to get to the audition and like sleep on my friend's couch while I was, you know, in New York city for the audition and all this crazy stuff. And I was like, is this even worth it? And then I remember they called me like 20 minutes after I auditioned and said, we'd like to offer you the job. And I had no idea what I was doing. I'd never worked 
like professionally as a vocalist before. And so I just kind of said, okay, sure, I'll do it. And then um, I worked for Carnival Cruise Lines on and off for about seven years. And I went to about 40 different countries with them and fronted a lot of different bands um, for them. And I worked my way up from being like the show band singer to being a music director. And I also worked as a guitar soloist for them. And I had my own like um, main stage show for a while that I kind of fell into having. And it's just kind of like been, I think I learned more working as a cruise ship musician than I would have ever learned like in university or anything. And so I'm like so grateful for that opportunity and, you know, that experience. What is some of the biggest lessons you've learned while you were doing singing on cruises? Um, I, it's, it's an endurance gig because you're working, you know, six nights a week. Sometimes you, you don't have a day off for like 10 or 11 days in a row. And singing is very physical. I think a lot of people, you know, don't really realize that. And so it's, it's learning how to physically be able to run that marathon every single day, um, and give a consistent performance every night, uh, to different people. And so that was one of the biggest lessons I learned. And then also just problem solving, because at the end of the day, you're on a boat in the middle of the ocean. So if you have a problem, there's not, you can't like go to Walgreens and buy something like, oh, I just need this cord. You're going to have to figure out how to just finagle or or make do with what you have. (laughs) And I think that was something that I learned a lot with like having guitar issues on before I had to start playing or something, you just kind of had to be like, okay, what are the workarounds that we can do? And now I feel like that, like stress under pressure, though it was so stressful um, a few times, I feel that it's helped me so much now in my life. Because now when things happen, I can kind of step away from it and go, all right, how do we solve this problem? <laughs> so those are probably the biggest lessons. That's fantastic. And I think we can take like a more general approach to this too, with like problem solving and doing things with what you have in general with finding opportunities and creating your own opportunities a lot of times we need to play to our strengths and problem solving and looking for solutions is a big part of many situations where you need to learn how to make things work and kind of bring in your skills and see how you can work those in order to have outcomes so I definitely think that's great how you have got so much exposure with that while doing the cruises. So along with doing the cruises, and I know you did work in hotels as well, what are some of your other favorite opportunities that you've had over the years? Um, Yes, I did work in hotels as well. That was when I got tired of floating. Um, (laughs) I wanted to do the same kind of job, but I was like, I just don't want to be floating. Um, So that that was a good opportunity. I met my husband doing that as well. So we have like a duo. That was a great opportunity. Um, I also... um, when I I used to, I just moved back to New York City, but I used to live here. And I had um, sort of like an emergency, like tragedy happened where we lost our apartment very quickly. And I ended up kind of having like nowhere to go. And um, I kind of just went to Europe at that point and scheduled this whole play to stay in hostels tour kind of thing, because you could, you can trade your music for accommodation in many different hostels like across Europe and I just had never traveled that way so I kind of took the experience that I had where I was like okay I'm not going to have anywhere to live in New York right now and kind of turned it into okay I'm going on tour (laughs) Um, and I think that was one of my favorite experiences. That's so interesting I didn't even know you can do things like that. You can. Um, I found out about it on, I think, a blog uh, of someone who was a traveling musician. And I said, and they had just done it a few times. And I said, I wonder if you could like string those together and kind of do a whole little tour. And it was just like a small acoustic, like coffee house tour. It wasn't anything major with like big venues, obviously, Um, because where I was in my career, I wouldn't have probably been able to, you know, book venues like that. But it was really nice. And you got to make good friends and and like connections with the people who were listening to your music and they all like really enjoyed you know having the live music there and yeah it was a great experience yeah that's fantastic I love your whole outlook and everything that you do focusing too on making friends and building connections because 
I feel like as a musician, no matter what we're doing, that network is so, is so important. And so even though you had that difficult situation, you transformed it into something great. And I think a lot can be learned from that. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I didn't feel that at the time. But then afterwards, I said, you know what? That was actually very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you blogged about your travels too then? Yes, I did. Um, I, th- I had a blog called Darling Jane on the Road. And I would um blog about all the different countries I was staying in and honestly um people always ask like oh how did you book all those gigs how did you get those opportunities for those gigs and you just you just email people you just have to ask and talk to people you know I think people are a little bit nervous to just cold email people because they think like oh I don't want to bother anybody or I don't want them to think like oh who does this person think they are but if you just like ask sometimes you people go oh yes we'd really love that that would be incredible and you know, you can, you can get opportunities that way if you just make a human connection with somebody. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I just think in general, putting yourself out there is really important. And when trying to find opportunities, coming off as someone who is eager to share music and show your confidence and, you know, like come off as someone who like, has that mentality that I can offer something to somebody else. Because Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times, especially when it comes to promoting music, a lot of the focus can be on having other people do things for us. But I think focusing on a mutual relationship where, yes, you're getting opportunities to play and perform, you're getting paid for that, but also a place who maybe doesn't have much live music that can bring people in and help their business. So I think just having the mindset of finding a way to mutually benefit each other is a huge part of opportunities. For sure. I think I've always been um, kind of service minded. And so I think it's helpful to see music as a service that you're offering people um, as well as because I do think that people can get in that gig mindset where people are doing things for you as the performer. But it really is a hospitality and like a service that you're offering people entertainment and, you know, catharsis music. Yeah, yeah, super inspiring. I, I love that so much. So along with doing all of the awesomeness that you're doing, you release music as an artist as well. And your newest single is I Win Again. So can you share the inspiration behind this? Yes. Okay. Uh, the inspiration uh, for I Win Again, um, it's a bit of a sassy track. Uh, when I worked on cruise ships, it was like mostly fantastic. And 99% of the guests were like wonderful people. And I still keep in touch with Uh, some of the guests on my Facebook page and Instagram and all that. But like every so often, uh, especially when I was a music director, I suppose, uh, and I was in charge of the department, I would take the sets that were not like optimum so that my other performers could have like the better sets, if that makes sense. Like, so I would play in like the casino bar from like noon to 5 p.m., which is not a good slot. There's like, you know, it's just like, the people who are in the casino bar at noon in fluorescent lights, like drinking whiskey, it's just in the smoky environment. They like, don't like music. They're not into it. They didn't want to go on this cruise anyways, you know? (laughs) So they're not really in the greatest of all moods. And so I would get up on stage to do those daytime sets and there would always be some random guy at the bar and I'd be like, okay, hi, my name is Savannah Jane. I'm going to sing some songs. And they would just be like, Ooh, or they would just be, drunk and just so um like curmudgeons just like not happy with anything I remember I'd go like does anybody like Joni Mitchell and they'd be like no (laughs) oh my gosh I don't know (laughs) you know I'm just trying to do my job here dude I don't know um and there was like one like I remember that contract specifically because I was music director and I was trying to take those daytime sets and like just put myself under the bus for the rest of the team take one for the team I guess I just dealt with that all the time and that was kind of like the inspiration for the hook line of my song I went again and it goes like you're a has-been who never was uh you gave me so much hell just because and it was kind of like that's just kind of they would always act like they knew more than me or they were better than me. And I don't know if it was because I was a woman on stage and, or, you know, all of these factors, or maybe they were just grumpy people in general. Um, but that was kind of just like where the inspiration came from. Cause I always, I never snapped, I, I never snapped back. I was always very kind, but then, you know, 
I just wrote a song about it to get back. <laughs> yeah. Super yeah. Taylor Swift of you. I, I support. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> inspired me to do like <laughs> No, but really, I think that even though you're singing about a very specific situation, I think that's something we all face, you know, chasing the dream of music, getting that criticism and just remaining humble and kind and, you know, just being the best versions of ourselves. Like, we're the ones getting these opportunities, not the people at the bar getting drunk and saying mean comments, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I think I that, like- you know, like, even though the song is sassy, like, in that moment, you were the one who was the bigger person. And so I think that's really important to remember when we're taking opportunities, no matter what they are. So what do you hope that listeners take away from this song? Um, I think that this is our first kind of like sassy rock song that we've put out. And I hope it kind of like gives people a little bit of confidence or makes people feel, I don't know why I keep using the word sassy today, but like feels a little, <laughs> like, get a little bit confident or feel a little bit more secure um, and have a bit more of like a, yeah, I can do that attitude. Yeah. It doesn't matter what people think about me because, you know, I'm doing me and I'll find the things that are right for me and I think I think that's what people could take away from it, just being secure in who you are and unapologetic, maybe. Yeah, that's super empowering. I think it's a great single. So congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, we, we enjoy it. We're excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. So now I'm curious if you can share a little about your songwriting process and how you go about creating your songs. Sure. Um, my process has changed over the years. Uh, for a lot of different reasons, mainly because I've begun collaborating with my husband. Um, and so I'll, usually I would write by myself, um, but now we kind of like bounce ideas off of each other, which is really good. I think as songwriters, you can get into this mindset where you think you have to be very insular and that songwriting is very private and personal, but it actually is so much better if you work with other people and like co-write and take other people's ideas and have other ears on things. And I, I mean, I used to be somebody who was very insular about it. And I just think being in community and songwriting has helped a lot, but I actually, um, I write a lot when I'm walking. I don't know if that's normal, but I, I go on like a lot of like really long silent walks and I just have like my phone with me and I'll write little things as I'm walking. And then usually I come home and like, put it all on a notes app and then kind of try to put it together into a song. So that's kind of how I wrote this whole album was like walking through the forest in England. <laughs> that's fantastic. I love that. So just from that too, like I'm, I'm sure that all the places you've gotten to visit over the years has influenced you in some way. So have you written songs like when you were doing the cruises and things or was songwriting that something that came afterward? Oh, no, I've always written. I've been writing since I was a child. I got made fun of so much in school because I would always be like writing a song and I'd be like, this is my new song I wrote. Uh, and everybody, I don't know, all the kids thought it was weird. And maybe it was. I was I was a weird kid. It's OK. Um, but yeah, I've always written and um, I started like putting out music that I had written when I was in college. Uh, and then, yeah, I kept it up on the cruise ships a little bit, although my full-time gig was obviously working on stage. So it was like a little bit less of a focus then. Um, but yeah, I would always write wherever we were. And I, I thought, I always felt it was very kind of cool to try to get into the energies of wherever we were to kind of like write from that perspective a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And I also think it's really interesting too, because I feel like as songwriters, when we write authentically, the more experiences we have and the more people we've met and places we've seen, that just makes our writing more rich as well. So I think from your experiences going to so many places and having so many experiences, I think that's making your writing a little more diverse too. I hope so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Well, just to wrap things up, what are some final thoughts you would like to share to everyone listening about creating your own opportunities? Um, I would just say, uh, don't be afraid of things, like be less afraid, I guess, um, and be a bit more bold because there's a lot of things that just like are really 
friendly email can get you. You know, you could you can email venues and just say, hey, I've got a duo that I'm putting together. We'd like to do a show. Is that something you'd be interested in? And you'll be you'd be really surprised at how many people come back and say, oh, yeah, we'd love that. We'd love to work that out for you. I think just being a bit more bold and just asking for the things that you want or inquiring telling people this is my goal do you have any suggestions of how I could achieve this goal and just hearing what people say they might say oh I've I've got this I'd love to help you with that you just never know so I guess just being a bit more unapologetic and asking for what you want perfect well Savannah it was lovely having you on for such an interesting conversation can you share with everyone where they can find you online and listen to your music Yes, of course. Thank you for having me. This was really fun. Um, I am Savannah Jane, S-A-V-A-N-N-A-H, like a long grassy plain, uh, and J-A-I-N-E on all uh, social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. And then I'm also Savannah Jane on Spotify and iTunes, and that's where we put out all our music. We're going to have a new single every month for I don't know, probably the next six or eight months until our album comes out. So it's called Slow Burn Baby. So I hope it's going to, I think it's going to be really good. I'm excited. That's awesome. So for now, you're focusing more on the writing and releasing, not as much the traveling and performing live then? Right now, yes, we are. Um, Because, well, it's a whole big thing. My husband's British, I'm American, and, you know, we're having visa issues. So he's actually back in England and I'm in New York. And we're kind of like focusing on figuring that out um, before we kind of like schedule more like traveling performing, but yeah, we're focusing a lot on, right. We've already done the whole album and recorded the whole thing. And now we've started the second one. So (laughs) we're just writing and recording as much as we can. That's awesome. Well, I'm just curious that I didn't ask what you were talking about the whole traveling thing. What was that like during the pandemic? Mm -hmm. During the pandemic, uh, we, my husband and I were working on a carnival ship, uh, out of Galveston, Texas. And it was like, it was, March 2020. And I remember because I worked for Carnival for a long time, but everybody on that ship was like semi new to Carnival and they were all like, oh, no, it's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. We'll never start stop cruises. And I remember being like, I think this is going to be a big problem. For the <laughs> <laughs> like, and I felt like I was being really dramatic or really like negative Nancy about it. But I just remember sitting in like the cruise ship bar and being like, guys, I don't know about this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then like they canceled cruises like effective immediately. And we were, we were stranded at sea for like weeks. Oh my quarantine. gosh, what? And but we were really lucky because we were not quarantined like inside our cabin. They hadn't like gotten to that yet. They didn't really know. Nobody kind of knew what the protocol was at that time. It was kind of like, just figure it out as you go. So we were actually, we dropped all the passengers off. I remember it was so weird because it wasn't planned. So we just dropped everybody off. And then we just went back out to sea with just the crew. And they just opened the bars up for the crew because they didn't know what was going on so that's that's kind of what carnival does when they don't know what's going on they just like feed people alcohol and food (laughs) (laughs) that's like their strategy and it did work so we were just like off the coast of texas for weeks eating burritos and drinking whiskey (laughs) like what are we doing like what's the plan and i was so mad because i had been since like january i was so i was the one that was going like hey i think that we should maybe like look into making a plan (laughs) That's wild. Well, at least like you didn't get stranded somewhere because there was a whole thing where like people getting stranded in countries and not able to come home. That's wild. Oh, no, girl. I worked that out because as soon as we docked in Texas one time, I said, I'm getting off the boat. And they were like, I don't know if you can do that. And then we have all this blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, no, no. I've got my passport. I've rented a car. I'm going to drive home. Have a great time, though. (laughs) (laughs) I wish you the best. And then my husband got a flight back from Mexico to England and they let him off as well. And then I quarantined for two weeks in Florida where I'm from. And then I flew out to England and we got a little house out there and spent the pandemic out there. So, but it was, it was really wild. (laughs) Well, I'm glad I asked. This is a nice little story to wrap up the episode. (laughs) Yeah, it was a wild time. (laughs) That's crazy. Well, thank you so much again for joining me. It was lovely having you on. Listeners, I hope you enjoyed this very entertaining episode with Anna <laughs> Jane. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. It was great to chat with you. Of course, it was lovely having you. And of course, until next time, stay, stay right, right on track. track.